I'm in a slightly different place this morning. I made an entire fool of myself, but it's fine. You just love the attention, don't you? That's really stupid. Hopefully, we'll get a second meeting with the publishing company. just had breakfast and oh my word I need to shout out my friend Amanda for a minute the one who has her own vlogging channel called this fantastic life oh my goodness she made me the most delicious peach jelly I've never had peach jelly in my life and peaches are my favorite fruit you all know this by now so when she told me that the mason jar on the counter was for moi and it contained peach jelly I was slightly ecstatic about it so this morning I thought I would try it out and oh maybe I can convince her to post the recipe on Instagram or something for you guys because it was delicious I paired it with peanut butter toast and I definitely need the recipe before anybody else I'm just about to do my devotions. I'm currently going through this book called New Morning Mercies by Paul David Tripp. I really like this book. It's just bite-sized devotionals that are scripture-based and they're not fluffy in the sense that it's more story than lesson. I do like a little bit of fluff thrown in every now and then because that's that's the way I commiserate with someone else is I offer up a similar story or experience that I've had to sort of be like, I get what you're feeling. I've been there too. And I tend to be drawn to devotionals that do that as well. Lisa Turkhurst does that a lot where she'll say, this is the scripture we're discussing. This is the lesson we're discussing. Let me give you an antidote of what I've experienced concerning this scripture. Kind of puts it in a real life situation, a real life perspective. And I love that. But I do think there's a difference between fluff and getting to the heart of the matter and this devotional in particular gets to the heart of the matter every time I love that it goes through day by day so you can just start at whatever date you're on and work your way it also keeps you kind of accountable because it lets you know if you skipped a few days but I always feel so guilty when I open to where my bookmark is and I'm like oh it's um, definitely not that date let me just <laughs> move forward a few pages it's the 19th. Oh, hey, I don't have to skip any pages. I'm actually on track today. <laughs> I won't read the whole thing, but I'll just read the beginning part to kind of give you an idea of what I'm reading about today. It says, God puts you in hard moments when you cry out for his comfort so that your heart becomes tender to those near you who need the same comfort. And then the first line is, sometimes we are quicker to judge than to comfort. I think I comfort and judge in equal measure. I feel like there's a balance and I'm not perfect at it. In fact, I think I probably lean more toward judging than comfort, but the judging comes out of love and wanting to help and wanting to fix it. Definitely a fixer. And I didn't realize that before. My dad's definitely a fixer. I mean, men are, are by nature fixers, right? And I would voice a problem or a frustration and his response would be, well, this is what you do to fix it. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> just just commiserate with me. Just empathize with what I'm feeling. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to create a solution. Just, I just want you to hear me. I am my dad. 
I already knew that I was my dad. I just didn't realize I was that much my dad. Hi, June. Are you saying hi to the camera? Are you saying hello? I'm going to read this devotional, enjoy the sunshine until it gets too hot to bear it, and see what the rest of the day holds. Hello loves, it's a little while later. I just sat down to edit this vlog, but I figured while I did that, I would let you see the day that Nicole came over and we spent the entire day dedicated to working on our respective books with a little shopping included. So I'll start editing this, insert those clips for you now, and see you at the end of the vlog. YouTubers, I'm Cassandra Joy and welcome to my channel. As you probably have noticed by now, I'm in a slightly different place this morning. I get to spend a whole week pretending I am a dog owner, house sitting for some friends while they're away. It's been a lot of fun already. This morning I've been able to take it easy, but that wasn't the plan initially. I was going to check out a local farmer's market that's close to this area, but then it rained a lot. So my plans for the morning change slightly, but that did mean I got to sleep in, which I definitely will not complain about. My friend Nicole is coming over and we're going to do a little bit of shopping in Target because I need a couple grocery things that I forgot to pick up, and then we're going to spend the day working on our respective books. There's just something about sitting and being productive with an ambiance of rainfall and gray skies. I don't know. There's just something really cozy about it. Nicole will be here any minute. Once she gets here, we'll get the day started. June, we have a visitor. Boomer, we've got someone at the door. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Are you guys happy? See, this is June, and that's Boomer. Hey, you are just so patient. Hi, you guys. You just love the attention, don't you? These are gifts for someone else, but I found this fruit colander and a whole pack of paper. Looks so pretty, and then a few loose sheets of paper. Okay, so that was a slight surprise in price. <laughs> Apparently, just because they're under a 50% off sign does not mean that they're necessarily 50% off. That's really stupid. So I gave some items back, which I'm really sad about, but I got the main ones that I wanted and we're gonna go to Target next, so maybe I can find something similar for a lot cheaper. <laughs> Why is my weakness always mugs? <laughs> There's some good ones out there. There are, Nicole is trying to keep me. Spending all her money. Yes because it's easily done. <laughs> Good friends. Yes, you are. All of our groceries. I'll let you guess whose items are whose. Leave your suspicions in the comments. Well, we braved Hobby Lobby and got nearly drowned by the rain. <laughs> and now look, it's total sunshine. So, Nicole and I have decided that we're going to spend the rest of the day writing, 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 editing, and see what we can do, making the most of today. We've just had lunch, so now we're fully, 
what's the word? Fueled? Focused. F focused. One, I'm focused. One of us is focused, one of us is not. Uh, I'm gonna see how much work we can get done. So I'm gonna put you on a lovely little time lapse and we're gonna get to work. Good morning, June. Hi. Hi, Boomer. Good morning. Okay, so I currently have a balance on my Zevia Pop. Is it the smartest tripod in the world? No. Do I have to crouch in order to be in the frame? Yes. I've made myself some chicken um, seasoned with salt, pepper, and onion powder, and then I put some of my avocado spread on top with bacon bits. I've been looking forward to this all morning. Today's just gonna be a really slow day. I'm going to work on my book. I edited some this morning, even sat outside for a little bit, but it just got too hot so I came in. I just realized I should probably show you my snack bowl before I eat it. I've already consumed all the peaches and a few of the strawberries, but it was a very pretty bowl. I'm so excited to eat this. I was hungry, but I didn't really know what I wanted, and I figured that fruit would be a good healthy snack. So I feel like I haven't shared with you recently what I'm up to in regards to my book. Most things haven't changed. One of the dogs is upstairs. I can hear a little... Beat. I'm still in the editing process, but I feel like I'm finally gaining some momentum. It's been really hard to dedicate time to doing this through the summer. I just feel like my summer has been so busy, and I did not plan it that way. I was gonna have a very slow summer. <laughs> Clearly that didn't happen. My goal is to cut as much of my book as possible without losing the heart of it. And that's been the hardest thing for me to do. In other books I'm writing, on and off, writing as I think of things, I'm finding that I'm a much better writer in regards to keeping things concise, in regards to keeping the plot moving, not letting descriptions or dialogue bog things down. I didn't even realize it, but I'm actually learning from my mistakes that I made in this first book. And I think the only reason I made these mistakes in the first place is because I started the book at 19. Obviously it's gone through a lot of transformations. It has grown up a lot. My writing has grown up a lot. And there's almost nothing in the book that is part of the first draft I wrote, if that makes sense. Everything's been redone and done better. But because I started this story when I was 19, there's so much story that's been built upon and built upon that now I have this really in-depth good story, but it's massive. I want it to be a three book series, plus an extra that's just thrown in for fun. You wouldn't necessarily have to read these three books in order to understand the extra book. That probably makes no sense at all, and I'm gonna stop trying to explain because I can't explain without giving something away. Like today, I had to take a scene that I've had since the early stages, not the very beginning, but pretty close and I've loved that scene so much. I can tell you because it's not going to go into the book. There was a hydra in it which sounds very left field but it worked in the scene and it worked in the plot. I loved the scene and how it played out but then I realized that one it wasn't really necessary. I could write it in a different way that was shorter, more succinct and made more sense but then also I realized that what I had planned wouldn't work with the lore that I had already dictated to be true. How I missed that, I don't know, but I realized it yesterday. I've had this scene since the early stages and I just realized yesterday that it went flat against the lore that I had put into place and would not have worked. I felt really dumb <laughs> because nobody knows my book better than me and I still totally missed that. So I had to delete that scene and rewrite it a little bit differently and I think it's better for it. A part of me will still miss the Hydra scene. <laughs> Maybe someday if I ever become a big famous author I will include that scene so that you guys can read it and just see how it was originally thought to play out. Rick Riordan does that with some of his. 
He includes extra scenes that didn't make it into the book just so that his readers can enjoy what he envisioned originally. And I think that's cool. This is the part of writing that I hate. I love writing. I hate editing. But I know that in order to make this dream a reality, I'm gonna have to push through. And it's very rewarding, but in a totally different way. Finishing the book and being able to say, oh my word, I did it. That was so rewarding. Editing this book down to something that I can actually pitch to agents and publishers, that's gonna be an entirely different kind of reward. Speaking of that, I hopefully will get a second meeting with the publishing company that I met with quite a few vlogs ago. I sent them a few of my chapters, enough to give them a baseline idea of what the story is about, to get them into the plot enough to keep them interested and wanting more, hopefully. And they responded saying that they received my email and wanted to discuss my chapters. I just really want this book to be something. I'm so proud of it. I was telling a friend the other day that you could point to anything in my book and I could reach in and pull it out fully formed because I know it that well. My characters, I've had the privilege of living with them for so long that I know them inside and out as if they were real. I know that makes me sound completely insane, but it's so true. I know their personalities, I know their wants and their fears and their secrets and their desires and their dreams. A lot of authors don't get that opportunity because they don't get to live with their story that long. I think that's also why it's really hard for me to edit because I don't wanna screw it up and I don't want to go through all this work and have nobody like it. Not that I think my readers won't like it, but that publishers won't like it, and that would be devastating to me. I don't think I'm purposefully trying to put off editing in order to procrastinate anything, but there is that worry in the back of my mind that I could do all this work and it could be for naught. I hope this meeting happens because I'm really interested in what they thought of my chapters from a publishing house perspective. That is such valuable information that you don't get to ha have every day. So I'm very curious what they thought of my chapters and very, very nervous of what they thought of my chapters. I will keep you posted when and if that meeting happens. And you've officially reached the end of the vlog. Congratulations. Thank you for sticking to the end. <laughs> I have a feeling this vlog is going to be shorter than normal, but to make up for it, I know for a fact I will be vlogging this Saturday and it'll be such a fun vlog. I'm so excited. Hopefully the people I'm hanging out with won't mind <laughs> that I'm vlogging, but it's a day I really want to remember and I know you guys will love to see it. So even though this vlog wasn't very long, that one should be plenty for you to watch. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you being here. And if you liked it, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing. And if you subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you never miss a future video from me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Love you guys. Mwah. Bye. Say bye, June. Bye.